Have you been working on the grain at all yet? Yeah, I have. Well, what are we seeing here? What we're seeing here is that the film grain holds up the way that it should. In the pixel distortion test, it appears to me and to the computer that this object was photographed in the same original piece of film in, at the same time that the background was photographed. In other words, no overlay. Mm -hmm. I would say these pictures are genuine. Extrapolating from Maya's accounts, Dilatoso programs the computer to duplicate the lights Maya observed on the craft. At the moment, he has no explanation for their apparent rotation. Mary, any calls? Yes, yeah, Steve called. He's at home, and you're to call CRQ. CRQ. Okay. Uh, call Steve. Tell him I'll get back to him in about an hour. I'll take care of this now. Okay. Hey, Lee, look what I got here. Stevens has more news. We got a report back from Shellman. Mm -hmm. Sound analysis? He had sent the sound tapes Maya took of the craft to Robin Shellman, specialist in sound well, he identification. Found some very interesting things. He found some things we didn't hear on there. Such as? Well, he picked up, besides the basic sound, he picked up a small dog barking. Of course, we could hear him. He picked up a European police siren. We never heard that. He picked up a crow cawing. How the, other, wait a minute. How the hell does he pick all this stuff up? How does he determine they've a, the sound? They've got a sound bank back there that they match sounds in. They can identify known sounds. Okay, on this sound bank of uh, his, anything there to match it? Do we have he said, he said he can't match the basic sound. He can match all of the other sounds on the tape, but he can't match the sound of the, of the object itself, the emitted sound. Now look at this. He's concluded up to this point that the machine was built, must have been built for a specialized application. Recognizing the sounds from such a machine may be difficult. Also Later, Shellman will theorize from the sounds what those specialized applications might be. About four hertz. An area here that, Next, uh, Stevens takes the metal fragments to be examined under the electronic spectrometer to determine their components. Area in the sample. Preliminary examination of the metal has been done in Switzerland. And we've got little marker bars here that we can line up on each peak as they come up. This one indicates we have silver there. Mm -hmm. uh, over here, let's see. Got some copper, small amount of copper. It looks like about all that's in here at the moment. The big band here is silver, though. The big one is silver. Later analysis of other fragments also reveals small amounts of tulium, a rare earth element that is difficult and costly to extract here. This is one of the. Because of the unusual nature of the findings, the fragments are given to chemist Marcel Vogel, an expert in crystalline structures and inventor of many substances used in computer components. The first specimen I looked at is a metal specimen, which I classified as F1. This is the appearance that it looked at, rather golden colored on one side, silvery colored here. We find that, in truth, it is silver and a small amount of copper. We look at it here, this same area here, under polarized light. What is unusual of this small specimen is both highly crystalline nature, and suddenly we come to a metal section that we see here, and it showed a combination of metals that I've not encountered in any normal bit of metallurgy, both crystalline deposits and metal. Now, we with any technology that I know of could not achieve this on this earth plane. I could not explain the type of material that I have and its discreteness by any known combination of materials. I could not put it together myself as a scientist. It's also a challenge because I showed it to one of my friends who was a metallurgist and he shook his head. He said, I don't see how it can be put together. And we find that in this area there is evidence of machining that there are striations which look like the sample has been worked mechanically. It doesn't look like anything that we've made here. At this moment, I would feel very much inclined to accept what was given to me as being true. 
Always security conscious, the investigators hold key discussions outdoors to prevent eavesdropping. As the work piles up, they meet to assess progress and problems. And that is, we've got a company back here and an intercept clientele, a pretty heavy clientele. What are they going to be thinking about these hard-nosed investigators running around chasing flying saucers? Tom, it's an investigation, and it's a good investigation. No matter whether you're doing a murder one investigation or industrial espionage, you still have the basic criteria that you follow, investigative procedures. And I think if we maintain those type of procedures, I think we can well, control can the that. situation. There's one thing that we haven't thought about. Eventually, Sir. somebody is going to come to us and say, have you ever tested these people? Have you ever tried to find out if they're lying? Have you used psychological stress evaluation? Have you used lie detection? Yeah. Will Billy go for that? Oh, sure. I think Billy will go for it. He's been open with us all, all the way through. I don't think he'll stop at this point. Well, Steve, we've got another problem. We've put a lot of time and effort into this case already. We don't know when it's going to terminate. Well, I want you along. I, I want to do a real investigation on this, and I want real investigators. Well, what do you guys think? I think we should go for it. Okay, let's hope he's for real. Look, physicists say they're all hoaxes. I've been at this for 20 years. If this is a hoax, there are no real cases. The decision made, the team presses on. Computer analyst Jim Delatoso has some new findings to show Welsh. Let's go back and look at this picture again and get some information about the edges. I've discovered this interesting program for measuring the edges of things and comparing it to all the other edges in the pictures based on the relationship of those edges? The width of the edges and the properties in the edges. So we're stretching the data in the edges so we can count how many pixels wide it is. And it's very interesting what happens when you stretch them out because it becomes very clear. Pixels, these little squares, like building blocks, and pretty easy to count. Six, seven. So this one ranges from five to seven pixels wide, mm -hmm. this edge. So we have our range here is from six to eight. Mm -hmm. Now what this tells us in looking at all of the edges on the object is, first of all, that it's not a flat piece of plywood hung in the air, or it's not a paste up that was done. It actually has shape to it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, a very wide range, mm -hmm. which has to do with focus. Some of the object is more in focus than other parts of the object, which tells me right off at that point that we're dealing with something of size to it. With all the data they have amassed, the investigators have also come up with a lot of new questions. While they debate the necessity for another trip to Switzerland, a sudden crisis jolts them into a decision. There has been a phone call from Meyer. Halfway between Phoenix, where the intercept officers are located, and Tucson, where Stevens lives, a spire of rock rises out of the desert floor. Part of the rim of a long extinct volcano, Picacho Peak is noted locally as the site where the last battle of the Civil War was fought. It is here that Lee Elders and Stevens meet, when necessary, again, far from curious ears. This time, Elders brings a disturbing message, one that will add a new urgency to their work. Hey, Lee, what's hey, up? Hey, Steve, how are you? Good. What's going on? Oh, God, we've got some problems. Problems? Yeah, I just talked to Billy today, and uh, someone tried to kidnap his daughter. What? Nina? Nina, right. God. Billy got there in time. He, it was two men. They were in a car. They used a knife. They tried to force her into the car. What about Nina? Is she all right? She's fine. No problems. He, uh, he fired at one of them, and they Did escaped. Uh, no, no, they haven't identified any of them yet. The police are working on it, as I understand it. This happens to people. We've had it happen before. Other cases. We're going to set up some security measures over there, get a trail on these people. I agree. We've got to do something to take the energy out of this. Yeah, we do. We're going to go back. You want to go? When can we go? Very soon. <laughs>